good morning my student friends from around the world i am very happy to be back with you with yet another edition of the online training sessions on online teaching and online learning i want to once again start by thanking the sacred heart college for making this uh, platform available to me i also want to thank father prashant i want to thank uh, nirja janaki who has done all the background research for this work and i naturally want to thank all of you from around the world who is joining for this program live so far more than 4000 people have registered and we expect lot more to join the channel today i will actually speak about the challenges and opportunities for online learning i am not going to tell the young students around the world as to how to do online learning because you have been learning online for maybe 10 years ever since smartphones came into existence our young people have been learning to do small and big things online all the time so they don't have to be really taught in fact you can give a mobile phone to a 2 year old kid with starting with a youtube channel and they will within half an hour master how to move from one program to another so online learning is something which is intuitive for the new generation and therefore i'm not going to teach you how to learn online you have probably already learned a lot you have probably earned lot of nano degrees but what i'm going to tell you today is that what are the big challenges which you are going to face in an online learning world and how do you prepare for your life as well as your career learning online <clears throat> as much as i said about students and their experience in online learning i also want to tell you that your teachers are probably not exactly on the same page they are behind you in terms of the learning curve of teaching online and you are used to very high tech learning you are used to some of the best uh, universities and professors around the world teaching and you should therefore show a lot of patience in the coming days and weeks as our teachers get used to the new online platform but there are also challenges for you because the new generation which to which you belong you are going to be um, facing a very turbulent time you are already facing a turbulent time because of corona but the turbulent time started even before the fourth industrial revolution powered by artificial intelligence and robotics is changing the whole world of work the conventional way of working where you gain maximum education and then you enter into the employment market and then you continue in that career for next 30 or 40 years and eventually you retire to a peaceful life is something which my generation prepared ourselves but this is not the thing which you are going to have in your life you will have to face not only multiple jobs but multiple careers so you may start with a bachelor of commerce but you may end up doing completely different things in another 10 or 20 years so you have to be prepared to continue your study all through your life you will have to get out of the university you have to get back into the university you have to study online and you have to work full time part time multiple jobs at the same time and so on and so forth so the world of work which you are going to face outside the university is very different from the world of work which you have seen and which we have gone through so online learning is one of those challenges while you know the actual act of learning how do you use that to build a career which is the bigger challenge and that's what i am going to address today before we talk about what are the advantages and challenges of online learning let me start by asking why 
do we go to a university or college? Naturally, we go to the university and college to acquire knowledge. That's where new knowledge always came from. But there are other reasons as well. For example, we go to university or a college to earn a degree. We go to university to make friends. We go to the university to exercise our talents, creativity and leadership. We go to the university because we think it will help us to get a job. We also go to university many times in order to migrate to another country in pursuit of better employment and lifestyle. So tens of thousands of our students who are going to the university is not going only for acquiring new knowledge. This point is absolutely important for you to remember as we think about online learning. Because in order to, trans to transfer knowledge from the teacher to the student, online teaching is as effective as classroom teaching. There have been multiple studies on the educational outcome and all of them proved that online teaching is equivalent and sometimes even better than classroom teaching. But you go to the university for a number of reasons other than getting knowledge. And that is where the difference between online learning and classroom learning comes up strongly. So what you have to learn is that as much as you learn new things in the classroom, you have to learn how do you supplement the other aspects of classroom learning when you are studying online. This is going to the biggest challenge of classroom uh, online learning in the coming um, years. Now, even though I belong to the previous generation which went to the classroom, I had the unique privilege of learning online since 1999 when I was working for Shell and most of our new learning, updating of our procedures, all were done online. And since I joined the United Nations, I also had to undergo series of training, in fact, multiple trainings every year, which comes through online. I also had the privilege of designing new online courses, which were taken by thousands of students um, around the world. So it is from this background of both learning online as well as teaching online that I'm going to talk to you today. Now, one other question which you may ask is that where exactly should you study online? For most of you, obviously there's no choice. You will study where you are currently enlisted to study. Because of the coronavirus, more than 1.5 billion students are now staying home and a lot of them will have to be weaned back into the academic cycle primarily using online education. So clearly, online education in the currently is no choice. But there is a lot more than where you are currently studying. You could also study online on online platforms such as Coursera, such as edX. In India, there has been online education much before Coursera and edX came through what we call Indira Gandhi National Open University or IGNU, which had correspondence course and remote learning for close to quarter of a century. And there were similar universities elsewhere, such as Open University in the UK and many others. But currently, the options are expanding. So the question you have to ask is that which of these online courses are actually more valued? Are they accepted internationally? Should I pay for online courses? So there are a number of these questions which you have to answer before you study online. As I mentioned, if you are studying in a college and the college is offering its lessons online, clearly you will have to study that. But you must also supplement this study with other online op options available. Last week in India, the University Grants Commission 
came out with a circular saying that even as you pursue classroom studies, you are allowed to pursue another degree course or a di diploma course, which is obviously has to be through correspondence or online, so that by the time you graduate from your university, you also have a parallel qualification. So what are those options which are available to you and which of them are more valid? Internationally, even now, even though there are many online universities, they do not have an equivalent ranking as a university. The whole concept of university system is very tightly regulated around the world. And a national government almost always have to give an approval to university to exist, and the universities then have agreement between themselves to acknowledge one's degree in another country. And these are not automatic. But if you are studying in a university in India, then the chances that your qualification is approved for a job in India, as well as for a higher degree in another country, let's say the United Kingdom or the US, is much higher than if you are to study in an online platform. So this is the most fundamental challenge online education is um, having right now. At this point of time, if you do an online course in an established university, then you will be fine. But if you do an online course in an online platform, then the accreditation is not yet there. This is something which you have to keep in mind. So as much as you may know about artificial intelligence from an online platform, it will not be accepted as an accredited degree in, a, in India. It will not be appropriate for you to apply for a job through most of the Indian job portals, such as the Public Service Commission or Union Public Service Commission. So you have to remember that currently, at least in India, the online learning, not what you are going to go through in your college, but what happens in outside platforms is not yet considered equivalent to what the degrees which you acquire in the university classes. But there are many qualifications which are very well approved. For example, if you are a professional, such as a computer professional, the qualification you acquire, the certification you acquire, let's say a certified networking uh, professional, is accepted within that micro community of computer professionals as an acceptable course. So therefore, it is appropriate that you invest time and money to acquire those degrees. So the key for you to do before you initiate your online learning is the number one check, why am I studying this online? Am I studying because I want to acquire knowledge? In which case, it doesn't matter where the knowledge is coming from. It could come from an established university. It could come from an unknown platform. But if your objective is to use that to get a degree or to get a job, then of course you have to think differently and only established universities can as of now issue you with degree certificate based upon online learning. Professional organization can issue you with certificate which are accepted by employers and so long as your employer accepts that qualification that is good enough. So these are the decisions which you have to make. <clears throat> now I will talk a, a bit about online learning instruments which the students um, should be having. Right now, as I mentioned, 1.5 billion students are out um, around the world looking for online teaching instruments. And clearly, no industry can match this demand, either in terms of supply and numbers or in terms of the cost of delivering it to the low income uh, cities and governments around the world are currently thinking how exactly can online learning be brought to the students? Not all of them may have the best online teaching instruments. Right now, the options which we have are starting from a smartphone, 
which can be used to watch an online training. Almost probably half of you are actually learning this class through a mobile phone. You could have a tablet, which could be a very powerful tablet, such as, such an, as an iPad, or it could be custom made only for listening to online classes. You could have a laptop or a desktop, and you could have it projected through a television. So there are this range of options. The classes could be live or the classes could be recorded. But you have to remember that in at least in India, in many parts of India and also many parts of um, the developing world, there are challenges for students. Number one, they do not have access to the teaching, to the learning instruments. A family may have just one smartphone which is used by the mother or the father for their own employment and children may not have access to it at all time. If they have two children, they may not be able to afford it and if, even if they can afford it, right now it may not be available in the market. There are also challenges of bandwidth in, in the location where you are staying. Maybe there are no um, broadband connection. Maybe the broad, broadband connection is too expensive. Maybe the electricity is not reliable. So there are a range of challenges our students are going to face, but this will need to be fa faced. There are no other ways around it. So right now, what I'm recommending to the, the teachers as well as to the government is to have multiple channels available to the children and also probably minimize the amount of live teaching because when the teaching is live, the students naturally feel compelled to be in the class at a fixed time and it may be that fixed time when every other student is also looking for the same bandwidth so the bandwidth is not available. If the power breaks down during that period, the students will not have access. So as much as having a live class is a very good idea, there may be many practical reasons why in India we may have to opt for recorded classes which will give maximum access to the maximum number of students. The second point which we have to look after the learning instrument is the learning space. Where exactly should children learn? Right now, due to lockdown, children may be forced to sit in their own homes and learn from there. But in future, when mobility become possible, not necessarily long range mobility, but even short range mobility, then it is always a good idea for a few students to come together, even if it's two students, to come together and sit down and learn. And they may be studying in two different institutions. For example, let's say there are many students among you who have got admission in UK and Sweden, but the first semester, you are not able to travel because of travel restrictions. But you have flexibility within your district, wherever you are staying, to move around. So in which case, it may be a good idea that few of you come together and decide to sit in one common space where before the class and after the class, you can do a little bit of socializing and you can create some sort of learning atmosphere. And I can tell you, this is going to be the future of education in the world. The cur current type of setup, where there is one geographically constrained university, such as the NG University or the Kerala University or an IIT, where all the students who are studying there are physically present in one campus, where one teacher is delivering to all the students simultaneously. That's going to be history very soon. What will happen is that you may be a student in Harvard, you may be a student in Oxford, you may be a student in IIT, you may be a student in Secretariat College, but if your house is in Trivandrum, you may be able to go to a shared learning place in Trivandrum, which could actually be one of the existing colleges, and then sit down and learn this through learning instruments, through high-speed internet, through 24-7 power supply. So 
you start to think in those lines that the old period where you will all go to one college is not going to be there. It may be, it's not a good idea to sit at home and study all by yourself because that will not achieve many of the objectives of education. So therefore, start to create learning spaces. At least have one buddy, preferably more. But if you have no choice for a number of reasons, such as mobility, such as lockdown, then of course you'll have to do in your own house. In which case, please identify a secure learning space within your house. However limited the facilities in your houses, house is, but please create one learning space which you use consistently for learning. You ensure that there is not much noise in that corner of the house. There are no excessive light. The chair which you are sitting is comfortable because you have to sit uh, there for a long time. And then, preferably, if you have a headphone to connect, that's much better because then it doesn't obstruct other um, people in the house. And as much as you are in your home, and as much as you are allowed to walk around with your mobile phone as the class is ongoing, it is not a good idea to be walking around as the class is ongoing. But at the same time, as you are doing online class, as soon as your class is over, it's an excellent idea to start walking around the house inside the flat or wherever is possible. So you have to remember that when classroom comes online, you have to be more mobile. Normally it's opposite. You are walking to the class, you are spending time, you are walking around, you are talking to your friends in a normal college sit setting. And then you can spend a lot of time on your mobile phone or your iPad. But when learning gets switched, that learning goes online, you should try to become maximum offline because that's the only way in which you will achieve the parallel objectives of education, such as making friends and doing physical exercise and so on and so forth. There's a question as to what is the time in which you should learn. As I mentioned, my preferred suggestion for India is that the classrooms are not done live. Now, there are many reasons why a live classroom is a better idea as well. If the college chooses the time to do a live class, then you have no choice. If you are in India, if you are studying in India, of course, it will be the working hours of college, probably from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the evening. But if you are studying, online in another country, for example, you may have got admission to uh, the MIT and the MIT is now telling you that the first semester of the college will be done through online, but the classroom there may be happening at 12 o'clock midnight for you. Now, if this is the way, then again, you do not have a choice. But if you do have a choice as to when to study because the lectures are recorded and you can choose your time, then please have a consistent time every day. So don't decide that I will study whenever I want to study. Even though the, the system offers you that flexibility, for academic rigor, it's much better that you start your studies, I don't know, maybe eight o'clock in the morning, you could do seven o'clock, you could do five o'clock, that's not a problem. But be consistent. You could de decide that I would start the study at 4 a.m. and then I'll study till 8 a.m. Maybe that's a good idea because the bandwidth is the best, the noise is the least. So that's probably a good idea. You could then decide that I will now study between 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. for the same reason and maybe then 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. But whatever it is, be consistent and then prepare a timetable and decide what you are going to study. But you should also remember that spending more than six hours online would, could be very damaging. And this six hour itself should be calibrated to the size of the screen which you are going to use. If you are using a mobile phone, then the stress on your eyes is a lot more compared to if you're listening to an online class in a television system. 
So you have to calibrate the amount of time which you are going to spend online. Mobile phone these days have programs which allow you to notice how much time are you spending online. Since the lockdown came, I get notification that I'm spending more than six hours online on my mobile instruments. And this is probably the limit one should have. So now that teaching has come online, I want to once again tell you that things which you used to do online should probably go offline. So if you are chatting with your friends on, on your WhatsApp, then it's probably a good idea to start to talk to them so that you use different parts of your body and your strain on your eyes come down. <clears throat> Many teachers ask me when I talk about teaching online about students cheating, which means that A, they do not attend the class and they will probably put an electronic proxy. So you may log in and you may act as if you are in the class but you are not the class. You may take uh, a test, but probably you ask someone else um, to take it for you, or you may copy from one of your friends. So there may be, there are many ways in which you could do, you know, cheating in an, in an, in an online class. It's much, much simpler when the teacher is not looking at you. But I can tell you this, in the online world, there is nothing worse than you cheating because you are cheating yourself you are not cheating the teacher it makes no difference to the teacher whatsoever that you are in the class or not in the class you someone else wrote the um, assignment for you someone else was writing the examination for you it makes no difference to the teacher so the online world please take ownership please take responsibility because in the new world there's nobody going to look over your shoulders and ensure that it's who you who have acquired the knowledge. But you'll be found out as soon as you come to the employment market with a certificate acquired online, you'll be found out. But the employers are also going to assume when you go with a certificate saying that your proctoring may not have been perfect and therefore they will check your educational outcome a lot more rigorous than in the past. So for your own sake, tell yourself that whatever is the flexibility available to you, whatever is the opportunity available to you, we are not going to cheat because it's not going to help anybody. But there is something which you should do. This is regarding engagement. When you are in online class, you do not have to engage with the teachers as you are in the class. The teacher is not looking at you. The teacher is not asking you to ask a question but it is on you to take that initiative. So when you are in an online learning environment, ensure that you are engaging with your teachers all the time. If you are in a live classroom, then use the chat board. If you, after the class, use the bulletin boards. After the class, send questions to the WhatsApp. Whatever is the possibility, and give, it, give a call to the teacher. But whatever are the possibilities, please ensure that your engagement is maximum. This is not only to demonstrate your presence, but it's also to prepare for future. Because in, in the future working world, if you are not leaning in, and if you are not engaging, then your presence is not not. You should also learn to collaborate with other students. The future, is not going to be individualistic. The future is going to be collaborative and collective. And the biggest asset you will have in future is your ability to collaborate. You know, in, in a classroom, it's very obvious. Most students have their own preferred friends and their preferred gangs. But in an online setting, you, you are not used to that. I have requested in my last seminar to the teachers to start grouping people two at a time as a buddy system but then multiple groups in which you get engaged and then you start to work collaborative projects now the project may be assigned 
by the teachers or you could do it yourself when you are learning online you should take the initiative because there is there are limits to how much the teacher can push in your direction but as much as initiative you take as much as groups you form as much as new and creative things you do that is going to be the crux of the value of online education as i mentioned again the teachers may not insist the teachers are still getting used to the online education system so they may still do the conventional classroom they may still do the powerpoints and they may still be happy if you write the exam and score the marks but in your own life that's not enough you would perform in the real world outside only if if you learn to perform as a group and using all the online tools of collaboration is absolutely important you are a generation which grew up with social media so therefore collaboration comes naturally to you sharing comes naturally to you all that you have to do is to take those learning into the classroom so that whatever you are learning you are sharing whatever you are sharing you are learning in this context i also want to tell you students about looking after each other in a classroom looking after the vulnerable students so who are vulnerable students in a classroom in an online classroom there are many types of vulnerabilities number 1 i already mentioned those who are digitally vulnerable people who do not have electricity 24/7 people who do not have bandwidth people who do not have the learning instruments which you may have access to so this is a digital vulnerability you should reach out and the teachers should facilitate this to your friends and find out if they have access if your buddy does not have access to good bandwidth and you have access then please invite that person to your house or your learning space so that you can work together if they do not have access to 24/7 electricity please invite them to your learning space so that they have access to electricity when they are studying if they do not have access to teaching instrument if you have to spare please spare with them or you, you share with them because what the digital divide is going to do to students is quite dramatic people who are extremely good at studies could fall behind just because they are not digitally equipped to deal with the online learning revolution so digitally vulnerable number 1 number 2 of course are people with the learning difficulties this was always there that in every class there are students of multiple level of learning ability but in a, in a in a real classroom teachers could give special attention to those students and friends could help them one each other but in an online learning environment everyone is sitting in different houses and the teacher is not able to provide that type of special help once again i have requested the teachers to identify those who are who have learning difficulties and then support them by creating a buddy system some of the very students who study very well create a system in which they are paired with somebody who is not doing very well so that they can learn together and somebody who is doing good can uplift the other person they can be put into a group so that the group momentum will carry it through but you as a student also please be on the lookout and please reach out the third set of vulnerability is about people who have different abilities children with different abilities already have challenges in attending universities and the digital revolution make things a bit worse so if you have cl- classmates who have le- different abilities please ensure that you include them in your learning activities because only if you create a society where every segment of the society people of all backgrounds including people with different abilities are able to perform to their best then you create an optimal society girl students face particular challenges in online learning environment 
unfortunately in kerala even now there are gender stereotypes there are responsibilities assigned to girls at home which are not assigned to boys so while boys might get uninterrupted study time that may not be the case for girls so both teachers as well as students should be cognizant of these different gender roles in terms of digital learning in your classrooms as you will see your teachers are working hard as i speak i know thousands of students across kerala are preparing for the online teaching for the first time now the online teaching which you have seen in youtube in coursera in edx these are courses which spent months in preparation and hundreds of thousands of dollars in production in 2014 when we designed our first online course we spent close to a year planning for it and we spent four months intensively working on it multiple lectures animations associated materials and we spent 150000 dollars close to 1 crore rupees just to create one course of 40 lectures and six credit points and it is this type of preparation which you which go into an online course which you are used to but what we are you are going to see our teachers who with probably one month notice limited training very limited resources trying to teach online so there will be constraints of that so please be patient and please be as much supportive as possible but as much as you study from the classroom of your teachers there are also lots and lots of learning material out there you go to youtube you go to a ted lecture you go to a lecture from other universities you can audit without making any payment in this online universities almost any course which you want to learn similarly there are online resources in print uh, online resources such as journals such as newspapers something which is not video but digital content so use all those information to supplement the classroom learning which you are having i want to tell you a few things about good online learning and this go a lot beyond the classroom you are all used to working in the internet you know internet has lots and lots of resources and is very easily available one click you can get anything about from how to fold a paper towel a towel to how to build a nuclear power plant but you may or may not know that everything which is available on the internet even though it is easy to access they are not free to use there are copyright restrictions in india the whole idea of copyright is not fully understood when we were students we used to make photocopies of almost any book or journals without asking anybody without asking any questions but these are not allowed as per intellectual property right laws so before you use anything online please check out the intellectual property right if you google for an image the image actually says some images may be subject to copyright laws so please check what are those images there are provisions like fair usage and most of the academic usage are fair usages but don't take it for granted internationally there are companies whose full time job is to go around the internet to find out who is violating copyright rules and these are not even done by the owners of the copyright these are done by other people whose only job is to find out copyright infringement and sue so as you go online your entire life please be aware of the intellectual property right laws it is more damaging when you upload something than download something of course the new generation know about movies but not only about movies it could be about an image which you are using so before you upload anything online even even an exercise which you are doing for the classroom please remember that there are copyright laws the second principle which i want you to remember is about accuracy 
of information. Many people assume that things which are digital, things which are coming online, things which are on computer is true. Many people use Wikipedia as a basis for accurate information. Neither of this is true. There is probably 10% of what is on the internet is completely untrue. Many of them is fake and many of them are deliberately fake. And you should know what is true and what is fake news. Many of you already know this, but I want to tell you this again, that Wikipedia is something which is created by people like you and me. And people could start to say, write very silly things on Wikipedia. Of course, in due course, it'll be, it will be edited out by other people. But there could be a time when very irrelevant information could actually be on the Wikipedia and you could be using that to prepare an assignment. So before you pre prepare an assignment and submit your teachers, at least verify from multiple sources and preferably from journals and other reliable sources. So these two principles are essential. Number one, intellectual, intellectual property right acts. Number two, accuracy and fake information. Online learning opens up massive, massive opportunities for you. But as I mentioned, going to university was not just about learning. Going to university was for a lot more things, such as expressing your leadership skills, such as creating a network. In future, whatever future you will have often depended upon not what you studied, but the networks you had. And that's the reason why getting admission in IITs or Oxford or Harvard or Stanford was so important. Employers sought you out not because you knew more about management if you studied at the Wharton School or at Stanford. Employers sought you out because you were selected through a rigorous process and you formed to a member of an elite club of Harvard graduates or IIT graduates. Now, online education does not give you that option. There are 2 million students in Coursera and Coursera students do not have that type of bonding which an IIT student or a Stanford graduate have. So you have to learn to create these new networks which will propel your career outside the classroom. This is absolutely essential. So use your classroom to do the learning. Do your classroom to support each other. But in order to create networks, you have to go outside. And there are many ways of doing that. Number one, if you do not have it, I ask you even today, go and prepare your LinkedIn profile. I, I assume most of you know what a LinkedIn profile is. LinkedIn is one of the social media, the most preferred social media profile for professionals. So all the students who are listening to me today, either should already have one, if not, they should create one today. And not only just create a LinkedIn profile and leave it there. You should keep it live, you should keep it active. The LinkedIn has a LinkedIn university where you can study hundreds of courses. Some of them you have to pay to get a certificate, many of them are free. But always study. But not only study, you also engage with other students around the world. Start to form a network. See how many members of the network you can have. Like all social media, LinkedIn is also a very flat media. So you could be friends with anybody. You could be friends with a professor in Harvard. You could be friends with a student in China. You could be friends with a professional engineer in Sri Lanka. So use the power of LinkedIn and social media to create that network and be active. And already in the developed world, you are not looking for jobs. The jobs are looking for you. And they use LinkedIn as a primary medium to support you. They look at, and it's not they meaning a human being looking at you. It's a algorithm run by artificial intelligence looking at the students and finding that this student 
is very active and they are engaging the right type of people they are sharing the right material and therefore this person has potential and the job come to you and this is what you should now prepare for linkedin profile be active form networks and that is what, what is going to carry you through your next employment in this context i also want to tell you how the use of other social media is important while you are a student but also it could hurt your chances of employment you may assume that you have a linkedin profile and you behave completely appropriately in the social media in that professional domain but then you could have a social media page such as facebook such as snapchat or such as um, um some of the pictorial um, programs and then you behave very differently there you make very sexist remarks there you make a racist remarks there um you you share in a pro this is my private space and i do what i do here and it's none of the business of the employer but this is not how the world is now developing the way the world is developing is that artificial intelligence and social media algorithms are profiling each one of us based upon our behavior in social media research conducted in cambridge says that with just 69 interaction which you have with facebook the facebook can tell a lot about you it can tell about your age your gender your preference sexual orientation and so on and so forth so imagine each of us who have probably 10000 interaction with the social media how much information the social media can get about you and then they profile you and this profile would soon be available and maybe may already available to the employers so even while you may think it's an inappropriate act that in, you behave well in linkedin and you behave as you want in facebook that's not how the world is compartmentalized and you could actually be in real trouble i will conclude by um, saying that the on- online revolution in which you are now a part of is not going to be a stop gap arrangement the corona times will end for sure it may end 3 months 6 months more likely in 18 to 24 months but the online learning which has started would continue and it will continue even in kerala rules will change there may not be 16 separate universities in kerala and you will be allowed in due course to study a course which is offered by stanford and still get a degree from a university in kerala or vice versa you may still be able to sit in kerala attend one of the local colleges but get your degree from stanford so don't take what you are going through as a stop gap arrangement something you will graduate out of this is going to be the way of the future as i also said this is not also one time investment you will have to do lifelong learning so prepare to learn prepare to learn through the lifetime prepare to go back to the university and the classroom multiple times in your life right now it's a little bit of a challenging time for everyone teachers students parents employer employee everywhere but the future is going to be bright i have no doubt about it artificial intelligence and robotics is drastically going to change the world the fourth industrial revolution will bring unparalleled opportunities to all of you for work as well as recreation so be prepared for that change and i wish you all the best i will now take some questions um let me look at the um question which you have sent if you are not already typed in your questions please type in your questions and i'll be back with you in a second bye so sure.
I have a question from Mr. George. Is there any guideline, either by government or by universities, regarding online study resources requirement as of now? The university, if you are referring to universities in Kerala, I think the technological university have come out with guidance. But even before the universities have come out with guidance, the individual teachers are using all the flexibility which they have and all the creativity which they have to allow students to experience a new type of learning. So teachers are asking students to take a, a short massive open online course, a MOOC, so that that can be considered as a part of their existing program. So while there may not still be a, a full-fledged recommendation on online learning, there are clearly um, aspects of this integrated into the university system um, almost in every college. There's a question from Sri Lakshmi Kanoth. Is online education as effective as face-to-face -face instruction? As I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture, the online educa education has multiple objectives. It's not just about transfer of knowledge from the professor to the um, student. Education is a lot more than that. But if your question is purely about, in terms of transferring knowledge from teacher to the student, is online education as effective? The answer is yes. There has been studies ever since 2006, which I have seen, where the educational outcome in online class and face-to-face -face class has been compared, and it always come equal, some more, some less. I have myself conducted studies of our classroom learning. We have taught close to 500 students in classroom, and we have taught 12,000 students online and we have compared those students as to how they learned the material and the comparisons are very good. So that's not the issue. Transfer of knowledge is not the issue. But in terms of the objective for you of a university as a place to socialize the young, prepare the young people for a society, that's very different. If a child were to be born in a house and sit and do everything up to university, sitting in their bedroom, using the best instruments they have, the best teaching instrument, best, best learning instrument from the best universities, how will that person come out into the real world and start to interact with the society? Will they understand all the type of, you know, will they understand empathy, for example? Will they understand how to deal with people of different ability, for example? Will they be sexist, for example? So there are many aspects of education which cannot be done online and therefore some degree of interaction is needed. But that's not needed in a university classroom. So you, you need not recreate a classroom only for that purpose. That purpose can be met in other shared learning spaces. My own expectation is that in due course, there will be a lot more shared learning space right across the country across the world where you will probably go to your nearest shared learning space and you may go to multiple learning space you may go on monday to your learning space in kakanad you may go on tuesday to your learning space in you know marine drive so so that you meet different people instead of going to the same campus every day so clearly there are aspects of education which need personal interaction and that has to be done separately I have a question on what are the complexities of online teaching. I refer to my lecture last week. It's available on the SH Vision channel. And this is uh, about what are the challenges and how teachers can prepare for those uh, challenges. There are many uh, challenges and I've explained it. I have a question from Jyoti Nair. Will online learning help the personal development as well as interpersonal skills of a child? 
I I hope I have covered some of it in my previous answer. Online learning will not help with interpersonal skills. You will learn electronic interpersonal skill, but probably not physical interpersonal skills. So clearly, to live in a society, you have to supplement online teaching with offline socializing. And the world over, people are wondering how to do this. And my expectation is that the world will start to create shared learning spaces. You have seen what has happened to work from home revolution which has happened. And as much as the work from home revolution is going to create shared working spaces, online learning revolution is going to create shared learning environments. So that's how people are going to develop interpersonal skills. There's a question from Syed Saba. Sir, by just viewing at the online courses, how can you come to know its worth? A very um, interesting question indeed. As I mentioned um, before, there are many ways of dealing with it. Number one, if your objective is to obtain a degree which has accreditation, then clearly you have to right now go to established universities which are delivering those training content. You have to go to IGNU or FutureLearn. But if your objective is to understand a topic, then you can go anywhere. You can go to Coursera, you can go to edX, you can go to a number of other platforms. Now the new generation know automatically how to evaluate a product online. There are Google reviews and there are many, many, many other reviews. If I am traveling to, let's say Nigeria, and if I want to stay in a hotel, how will I decide if the hotel where I'm going to is a good hotel? I, I, you know, anybody can take a very good picture, even of a very bad hotel. And then I have no way of finding it out if it's true or not. And people try to do that. Many hotels in the beginning did try that type of thing, that they put pictures which are not realistic, which are photoshopped and so on. But very soon, the market found a way of getting around it. So that's when the reviews started coming. So people, user who actually go to the place will write a review and say, the actual facilities do not match the photographs. And then it start to get a lower and lower rating. So if you go to booking.com, for example, and if your hotel have a rating of less than five, then nobody is going to go to that hotel. And this is exactly what's happening for online courses as well. If there's a good online course, people will be writing good reviews. So in future, it is this crowd-based feedback, which is going to be your best bet rather than any other type of information which you receive. I have a question from Apiram. Is there any advantage in using a laptop than a smartphone to attend the online class? Um, absolutely, yes. Um, if you are using a mobile phone, uh, a smartphone, you are keeping it very close to, uh, to your eyes. The, the noise level is not good unless you are using a, using a headphone. And clearly, it is going to put extra strain on your eyes uh, and your ears. And so it is preferable. The, the bigger your learning instrument, uh, the better it is uh, for you. Before the online teaching came on board, um, doctors were saying that the, the screen time of children to, should be limited to you know, a few hours. I'm not going to give that figures now because, but now that the online teaching revolution is coming, um, doctors will have a hard time. We, we, don't, we do not have enough data of children having to spend six to eight hours looking at a smartphone. Out of necessity, people may have to do it now. And, but that is going to create a lot of headache, literally. So therefore, yes, uh, it is a good idea to go laptop. It's even a better idea to go desktop. And if it can be projected onto a television 
and you can create a learning environment that's even better. I have a question um, from a series of students, I imagine. It's uh, Akshay, Gobika, Sunita, Samraj, and Vinita. The question is, can you teach an entire course online? Can you conduct, a, conduct an examination online? And how do you prevent cheating? The answer to uh, the first question, can you teach an entire course online? The answer is um, absolutely yes. In my childhood, we always had this joke about, you know, teaching how to swim by correspondence. And the assumption was that one will never be able to teach somebody to swim by remotely. You actually have to get into the water and learn to swim. But th those times have changed. Now people are being taught how to run, how to fly an aircraft sitting in a simulator. I was in France in the National Fire Academy. And the firemen were taught how to do, do firefighting sitting in front of a computer using simulation methods. So uh, you may think that you can teach mathematics or economics online, but not brain surgery. But that's just a limitation of the bandwidth and the teaching preparation. In theory, there is no subject which you cannot teach online completely. The second question is, how do you conduct examinations online? So these are two answers. Number one, what is the examination you want to conduct? If you were to think the current type of course and therefore the current type of examination, so that's one issue that how do you have a set of questions give to the students give a fixed amount of time and they write the answers. But probably that's not the best way of examining a student. That's probably not the best way of finding the educational outcome of a student. And online teaching probably warrant a better type of examination. Even offline teaching, even classroom teaching would probably need a better way of evaluation. And I think that's where the world will go and the world should go. But the current approach to examination can be done very easily. You know, people can be given fixed amount of time. We do it all the time. When we recruit new students, the students are given 90 minutes. The exam paper will reach them two minutes before the time start and they're expected to complete within the fixed amount of time and respond. And then there is a question, how do we ensure that people don't cheat? And there are many ways of ensuring it. There are actually people who, whose job is to create program full-time, it's called online proctoring. There's a set of um, reference material which we will mail to all the participants of this um, webinar, which have a lot more details about online proctoring. I also want to tell you that when you're writing an assignment, if you copy between two separate uh, from somebody, there are programs which can find out about that. It's called online um, plagiarism testing. And uh, this is completely normal in many universities. I don't know if it has been started to use here, but as your assignments go online, it becomes completely feasible for a teacher to test every assignment which is submitted in a class with one click of a button and see who has copied from whom and who has copied ditto from the internet. So cheating actually becomes a lot more difficult in a digital world. Even if you do not have a fingerprint um, accreditation, if you, even if there, there's no television watching, even if no video, webcam watching you, even from your, the way in which you type on your keyboard, even from the, the way in which you use your language, online proctoring software based upon artificial intelligence can very easily find out if you are cheating. So as I said, don't even think about cheating. That's um, not going to work in a digital world. 
if some of some of you have questions and if you ask want to ask in malayalam that's completely okay with me i am just um, doing it in english because there are a number of students from around the world who has registered for this and i wanted to be accessible to them as well but if you feel more comfortable asking in malayalam please ask i have um, plenty of questions here but if some of you want to ask more question please feel free to um, answer those as well for online class proper interaction with teachers is possible or not how to clear doubts this is a very um, uh, interesting question and a very normal doubt which people have now i can give my own experience as a as a lecturer i before the lockdown for the last 10 years i have been going around the universities and colleges in kerala and giving lectures on range of topics from environmental management to um, artificial intelligence and before the start i will say if you have a question please ask please ask during the um, examination uh, during the lecture or after the lecture and i was always very frustrated that not enough number of students actually asked questions but since the lockdown i started giving lectures online and i was i could never complete the questions which people asked there are always more questions than the time available so what online teaching will do to you is to make it much more easier for you to ask the questions and receive answers and this can be done in many ways number one of course you have the teacher and you can ask the teacher you don't have to ask it real time many people may find it difficult you can ask in the in the in the comment box but you could also start in a in those places where you have a proper learning management system you can ask in a thread and many time it may not be even the teacher who is giving you the answer it may be your colleague your friend who would come and say by the way this can be solved like this and that answer actually could be even better than what the teacher would give or you may have the same question and since you are in a learning environment you may say i don't want to bother my teacher with this i will just google for it so there are many ways in which you can ask the questions and you can answer and i can tell you that the number of questions will come will increase in a digital world than in real world i have a question from amita mohan who says value of e certificate on science subject that that have practicals to be done um yes this is uh, a challenge at this point of time but this is just a transient issue as i mentioned there is nothing which you cannot teach electronically you can teach if you can teach brain surgery then to teach organic chemistry online is really a trivial issue but there are challenges at this point of time our um, universities are not prepared with those teaching instruments our universities are do not have access to those simulators and our universities do not as of now agree to have students knowledge tested through online examination or practicals but these are all limitation which we have set upon as ourselves if your objective is teaching a topic and ensuring that the knowledge has been transferred this is not a problem it will take time but it will come what is more likely to happen is that instead of as i mentioned in kerala already have 16 separate universities in kerala there are 800 universities in india there are over 10000 universities in the world now you look at other things so you look at internet search engines how many do you have maybe 10 google is the most obvious yahoo look at social media facebook one facebook you don't you know in the past there were orkut as well but 
there are a few. So LinkedIn, there may be one or two. So what is going to happen is that in the old world, there will be very, very few universities. Maybe there is one university in India. Maybe there are 10 universities in the old, old world. Maybe one for every language. Maybe two each. And these universities will invest as much as money is needed to create simulations, to create online lectures, which anybody can follow from any part of the world, real time, reduced time, redu reduced bandwidth, whatever. There will be many ways of doing it. They will also create ways in which examination can be done, proctoring can be done, cheating can be found out, so that students can be taught from anywhere, evaluated from anywhere, and degrees can be awarded. We are not there yet, but that's where we are going. So therefore, the question is not a theoretical one that has been answered, but a practical one. Can we do it now? No, the answer is no, we can't. There's a question from Akila, who I assume is a teacher. Can you provide some online website or YouTube channels which is more effective in teaching students to face the competitive exams? Um, this is a little bit of a tricky uh, question. I don't know exactly what is meant by competitive exams. Every exam is competitive. So if you are meaning civil service exam or Kerala public service examination, etc., um, we can, of course, find out. Um, but, you know, I get every day on, on my own timeline, you know, free public PSE coaching and so on and so forth. So with one, one Google, you should be able to find that out. But if you are not able to get that um, answer, please come back to me. My email is tumarugudi, uh, T-H-U-M-M-A-R-U-K-U-D-Y at gmail.com. Any of you who's listening this and they have any doubts, you can always write to me and I will reply to that and I can um, um, give you the answer. Please confirm you meant uh, competitive exam by Indian Civil Service or something equivalent. Yes, um, I have a question from Alex Jaws. How can we make good buddy system in online learning if teaching a course from uh, teaching is done from different places or probably he also meant if the students are sitting in different places uh, in the new generation you know children do amazing things for example you know i know my cousin apijit is actually teaching chess game to people who are sitting in london or in new york in the other parts of the world. So for I and my Abhijit is, uh, is is a student in Delhi University. So if a student in Delhi University sitting in Delhi can teach a younger student in um, London, then clearly anybody sitting in any part of the world can help somebody in other part of the world. And the new generation know exactly how this is to be done. And as I mentioned, learning is no less effective. But as I mentioned, if the objective of the buddy system is to share resources, yes, then there may be a problem. That if it is to share bandwidth, then of course you have to have physical proximity. So you have to create the buddy system for the purpose for which it is intended. Is it for teaching somebody who is not learning as fast, then it can be done from anywhere. If it is to share resources, then it can it has to be done differently. I have a question from uh, two people, Ganga and Shamsat. Is this online class become an end of school college life experience? Will it affect socialization and interpersonal relationships? 
the current online learning which you are going to experience um, is not going to be an end of college experience it uh, the teachers are keen to open the university the government is absolutely keen and i'm sure you and your parents are also keen to have normal education resume so that's not going to be an end of um, college experience whether this will last another four weeks or four, four months i can't say at this point of time but let's be prepared to have this at least one semester it's good that you make that type of mental preparation so that you, you take the entire course seriously so that you don't take that okay first few weeks i will go like this but when the real class start i will learn differently so take a four month duration a one semester duration for this but then beyond that period do not leave online experience even if your class resume 100% as before do not leave the online learning experience you continue to supplement your learning by learning online as i said go to linkedin today get your registration done look at linkedin university see what courses are available to you you go to coursera you go to edx and learn on things which you want to learn not probably something which you are studying in the classroom or probably something which you are not studying in the classroom something which you want to learn outside the classroom so continue that learning experience but your question was also referring to the interpersonal relationship absolutely essential i have covered it twice but i will say this again university was not just about teaching universities also was universities were also about um, making friends in in the european countries um, for example in many of the West, western countries for example universities are where people find their boyfriends and their girlfriends and millions of people actually become partners and get married after um, university um, classes so it is this you know in india of course we still follow arranged marriages etc but it is these opportunities which is reducing as the classes go online so it's absolutely essential for the society to create space where our young people can meet one another and socialize and meet friends and meet partners and so on and so forth and societies will find that type of spaces as i mentioned the current lockdown will end the classes will re- resume but the online rev- educational revolution is here to stay in 10 years time my own gut feeling is that the number of universities will come down drastically there will be global classes there will be global universities there will be globally recognized degrees but your own learning will happen in your in your village you may start to travel to see new place you may start to travel to attend an interview but your working space will also come back to where you want to be it could be in your village it could be in your town it could be in another town where you want to be but it won't be where the employer is teaching won't be where the teacher is and that's going to be the the future so yes you we will have to create the society will have to create shared spaces where students can socialize and become better ad- adults a question from ann mary can practicals be done using online classes uh, i think i mentioned this before if the answer is can practicals be done this semester this year the answer is uh, probably no we are not at ready for that but what is likely to happen if the strict lockdown continue inter district transfer is not possible that your teacher may teach you chemistry you may be in trivandrum and the teacher may be in thevara secretariat college so you study all the theory online but you may go to a college in trivandrum to do the practicals and somebody from studying in university college but resident in arnakulam may actually do their practicals in in kochi so this type of 
let's say shortcuts and uh, improvisations may have to be done but that's not going to be um, the future the future is where the practicals will fully go online now you some of you are doing biology may know this when we were uh, doing our pre degree in 1980s you know there are frog dissections and you know our college um, used to go and buy and procure frogs so that children could practice on them but now this can be done electronically soon it the same thing will happen to almost every other type of practicals i have a, a question from deepali kamat and sia abi is it safe to study online any security issues using apps like zoom very very good question actually um, i should have covered this a little bit little bit more i i, I assumed um, students um, would have this idea but uh, in retrospect I, i i thought i should have spent some time on this um, considering that very young people are going to be exposed uh, online yes absolutely there are major major security issues um, online and it's not just limited to zoom internet is a very very strange place and l- there are a, a, a cross section of the society as exist in the real life also exist online but many people believe and they believe very wrongly that you are anonymous online so people tend to do worse things when they are online than they would do on real life if you are on social media you already know this on social media you will make much worse comments about somebody than you will ever tell on their face and there are many psychological reason why people behave like this and so on and so forth so yes um when students go online and millions of them together there are clearly security issues associated with it now security issue could be about you know somebody um sending you abusive messages because they have access to your data somebody trying to groom you somebody trying to um, do electronic flashing at you um but as i also said before programs which you believe such as google such as facebook which you use every day they are also capturing everything which you do all the time and that record is forever you may assume that you have sent a private message to your friend but there is nothing private on the internet everything which you do everything which you ever did on the internet is there for ever it is almost impossible it's to erase your electronic record so yes absolutely you have to be very careful when you are online you have to if you get anything suspicious you should be careful you should inform your parents you should inform your teachers there are all po- sort of possibilities that you could you could be hacked your identity could be hacked but as i said earlier even things which you are people are not hacking but the way they are you are profiled by google by facebook by every social media platform which you, which interact is going to hurt to you in ways which you never imagined i'll give you just one example all of us use social media such as facebook you know we we like things we share things we write comments some people only share things they don't write do lot of likes or they don't do comments and you know they may share good things they may share bad things but they mostly they share now there is one internet hypothesis which is supported by supported by some of the psychologists that those people who share and only share have lower intellectual capacity compared to other people now this may or may not be true but if this is the hypothesis 
which get common currency. And then your employer look at your social media profile and see you only sharing and you may be sharing only the right things. They are going to connect that this person is not as intelligent as somebody else who is making comments. And it's going to hurt your employment chance, even if that's not correct. So as much as you worry about your privacy and your security, also worry about profiling on the internet because it is going to hurt your chances widely. There's a question from Benny Palati. What are the basic skills for online academic life? Of course, the first skill is retaining attention span. How long can you retain your attention span in a classroom, online classroom? And this is very different from in a real classroom. In a real classroom, you have no choice. The teacher is there. You cannot walk around. You cannot get out of the class. But in online classroom, you have to have an attention span. All the theory is saying your attention span normally is eight minutes. So that's why we are recommending to people to have their lecture broken into shorter duration and have multiple activities in the same class. Now, I know it's not very easy. I have been sitting and talking to you for an hour and a half now. So there are limitations to applying this rule. But number one, attention span. Number two, interaction. How do you make your presence felt in the classroom while the classes are ongoing? It's not necessarily while live classes are ongoing. You could make the commit after the class. You could start a discussion thread. You could you know, retain the material. So there are many ways in which you can make your presence felt. Number three, networking. How do you collaborate with your peers to ensure that your networking skills get improved. It's not just about the out education, the academic outcome, it's also about your educational outcome of networking skills. And finally, that of creativity. When you have are going through a classroom and you write the exam exactly like everyone else did, then that's really not good enough in the new world. Instead of writing an examination, if you may, were to make a mobile short film showing, let's say if you are an economy student, economic student, and you are learning about share markets. So you could write all the essays, but you could also make a YouTube video or a, a mobile clip on how the share market works. You could do some interviews of people. So creativity is the fourth uh, element. I think I have just one more minute, so I will see, um, I have many more questions. Okay, um, the, the final question I will take is from Joseph Jude. This is regarding how can we ensure that we are abiding by the copyright policies while using resources from the internet? This is uh, not very easy to be honest, but the first point I wanted you to realize is that there is an issue like that. There are copyright laws which um, are not very well followed or understood in India. But as learning goes online and everything which you download and upload become universal, these international legal companies could find a market in India to sue, not necessarily you, maybe you are you're the college or university where you are studying and where such copyrighted material was shared without consent. So clearly this has to be done as a part of the online supplementary course. So perhaps I will recommend um, to Secretariat College or to the government of Kerala that we do design a half, a, um, a half an hour course on how exactly you check the intellectual property right of a PDF document, a PowerPoint document, an image, uh, downloading and uploading. In the background material which we will provide, we will actually add some material about intellectual property right. I will close um, at this point of time. I want to thank um, all of you who have been watching. I'm aware that my own son 
Siddharth is watching this, so I will just say hello to Siddharth as well. And um, have a good academic year ahead. Thank you.